Welcome to House of Lasers. We are going to do another quick demonstration or tutorial on how Lightburn's test option for rotary works. Before we get into the rotary, let's explain what's going on here. The, the laser head is, is moved by a belt and the belt is connected to a gear which is also connected to our stepper motor. The stepper motor has a driver, usually in the back of the machine, that has specific settings uh, for your machine and for the gear that are on it. And, and basically, those settings or, or those dip switches, which I'll show you, um, tell, tell the stepper motor how many turns or how many, how many pulses or steps to take to complete a full revolution of that gear. Normally, this isn't something that you need to worry about because all of these calculations have been done and, uh, you know, it's just not something to think about. But when you go over to rotary, things start to change a little bit, especially if you're going to be adding a different rotary um, or if you're not getting good results with your rotary. Your settings could be off. And let's go in the back of the machine and check it out and see exactly what we're talking about. How do we know exactly what steps per rotation our, our machine is configured to. Well, all of them are different and all of them have a different chart like this. Um, these are the stepper drivers. Uh, they, they have dip switches on them and they also have a correlating chart to explain to you exactly what those dip switches are doing. So if we quickly look at the chart on my machine here, I can see that the I know mine is set for 6400, and looking at the chart, uh, switch 5, switch 6, switch 7, switch 8, um, which are, are all in the chart, are set to off, on, off, on. Now if we look at the dip switch settings, we can see that it is truly, number 5 is off, on, off, and then on. So if you figure out exactly what these dip switch settings are and what the steps per rotation are for the motor and the gear that drives your belt and your flat bed engraving, uh, it's a good start point for figuring out what the rotary needs to be. Now the issue that most people have with the rotary is that we're working not only with a gear to a belt, we're working with the gear to the belt to two different size gears typically, to a larger so, uh, wheel that your object is spinning on. So those steps per rotation are completely blown out the window. Um, and the only thing that we really have to go off of is the size of the wheel. Uh, unless somebody has given you the recommended specs um, and have done all the calculations based on the gear, um, Lightburn's new way of figuring this out is so much easier and quicker. So now that I've bored you with some of the technical aspects, um, I'm going to show you how easy Lightburn has made this for you to dial in uh, and, and get accuracy out of your, your rotary tool. If you make a small line, you get a piece of tape and put a small line on your rotary, um, you know, and line it up with the top so you can make sure that it makes a full 360 degree rotation. Uh, we go over to Lightburn and we go into Tools, Rotary Setup, and then we're going to enter in that number. And, and just use calipers or you can do a uh, circumference. And then if you, know, if you, if you did a circumference of, uh, of seven inches around, it'll give you the correct diameter and then you would punch in the direct diameter up, up there. Uh, but I know I've already measured mine with my calipers um, and I know that it is 2.25 inches around. So if I ran a test on that, it's going to spin a one full rotation. At least it should. It should stop there and go all the way back around. Now, if it doesn't spin far enough, 
then you're going to have to increase your steps per rotation. If it goes too far, then you're going to decrease it. But the whole objective with this test and with the correct rotary settings is to make sure that it does do one full rotation uh, exactly. And then you will have the correct steps per rotation. Um, but just be aware that while in rotary mode, um, roller rotary mode, these two settings down here do not go over to the machine and control the rate of spin or the size of the cup or anything. Uh, if you are off, uh, say you throw a 30 ounce tumbler on and you notice that it doesn't make a full rotation, you're, do you're trying to do a wrap, you know that the tumbler is 12.5 inches in circumference, um, so you've made a graphic that's 12.5 inches and it's not going completely around. You would have to increase your steps per rotation ever so slightly to get it to match up correctly. Changing your object diameter or circumference down here will not because it's all based off of that wheel size that the object is spinning on. If you went to chuck again, um, now the chuck is actually, there, there are no wheels anymore, the chuck is actually spinning the object. And, and at that point, the only thing that matters is the object. So just keep in mind, um, if you are not making a full rotation, which on, on my rotary, which is the, the Roto Boss Jr., he has the gearing set up so that it's almost one for one. So if my, if my steps per rotation on my machine on flat is 6,400, then more than likely it's going to be really really close uh, for the roto boss just because of the way he has his gearing set up um, a lot of these chinese machines are not set up this way their gearing is way off and you need to do calculations and manipulations to get it to do um, a full 360 or, or full rotation uh, just going off of my experience with with the other rotary devices that I have, um, I was at uh, 11,200 steps per rotation to get that full uh, revolution out of the wheel. So know that this, these settings are very specific to my machine and my rotary. Um, the only thing that's going to be specific to yours that you will know without doing research on the charts in the back is going to be the roller diameter you can quickly measure that throw in a number in in the steps per rotation and adjust up or down to get that one full revolution i really hope this helps you guys um and saves you some time dialing that in and and uh keeping you from having stretched and egg-shaped objects um also keep in mind that if you're doing a circle graphic your sizing may be correct so if you do a three inch circle it may engrave as a circle or as a three inch graphic but it doesn't look like a circle because of the warping around your eye sees it differently um, so we tend to always stretch it out a little bit uh, our rule of thumb is about 0.2 inch uh, stretch so that it's uh, it's elongated this way it, it kind of fools the eye a little bit but it's really really hard to get uh, a perfect circle on some of these cups but i hope this helps uh thanks for joining house of lasers and we will be back soon